Proudly and majestically, it anchors on the shore of Alexandria. It is the yacht Marusa that watches and witnesses Egypt's youth and strength, which defies time in grave events and that will forever challenge the impossible. Marusa, an icon of history, the pearl of the Egyptian navy, which not only bears Egypt's emblem, but has also gained from it an overwhelming vigor and a beautiful glamour. Yacht Marusa has maintained an imminent status over the past 150 years, through which it has been a partner in Egyptian modern history and critical events. Symbolic of the prosperity and greatness of its kings and rulers, a companion through their blooming and their fading away. In 1863, Khedive Ismail issued a decree to build the first Egyptian royal yacht and assigned the task to the British company Samoda. Ismail was keen on making it a floating palace, dressing it with manifestations of luxury and sophistication. Upon the Khedive's request, the yacht was adorned with touches of all civilizations that flourished in Egypt. In 1865, the Khedive stood on the pier of Istanbul's harbour, awaiting Marusa to sail aboard it to Alexandria for the first time. Not knowing that 150 years later, this same yacht will be one of the ten biggest in the world. In 1868, the Khedive Ismail sailed on a journey through Europe aboard the yacht to invite the kings and princes of Europe to attend the inauguration of the Suez Canal. On November 17, 1869, Marusa spearheaded the first multinational fleet to enter the canal in a declaration of its opening to international navigation. In this ceremony, the Khedive's guests included Empress Eugenie of France, who presented the Khedive with a piano and played it during the ceremony. And it was also attended by the Emperor of Austria, the Crown Prince of Germany, Prince Henry of the Netherlands, and many other princes and ambassadors, as well as Ferdinand de Lesseps. In 1872, the Khedive Smaïs sent the yacht to London in order to increase its length from 125 meters to 137 and a half meters. Seven years later, in 1879, at 4 p.m., on June 30th, Marusa witnessed the deposing of Khedive Ismail as he boarded the yacht for the last time, leaving his throne and dream behind to his son Tufik. In 1899, Khedive Abbas Hilmi II sailed to Port Said aboard the yacht to uncover the statue of Ferdinand de Lesseps. As passionate about Marusa as Ismail, Khedive Abbas Helmi II sent it to Glasgow in 1905 
to get in force with steam engines. Instead of its original propeller system, and a telegraph was installed on it in 1912. And for the second time, Marusa was the last exit of an Egyptian ruler out of the country in 1914, as it took Khedive Abbas Halmi II to Istanbul. And for the following five years, Marusa stayed anchored in Istanbul to be sheltered from the hazards of the First World War. In 1919, while Egyptians were amidst the revolution, the yacht Marusa was witnessing another revolution and it was sent by King Fuad to England again to wipe off the dust of the years it spent in Istanbul and to change the shape of its rear and also to increase its length by 8 meters to reach a final length of 146 meters. King Fouad also boarded the yacht in 1926 to attend the inauguration of his eponymous city, Port Fouad. Starting from 1937, King Farouk I shared the same passion about Marusa. In 1939, the yacht was sent to Iran to bring Prince Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the Crown Prince of Iran, for his wedding to Princess Fauzea, King Farouk's sister. Once again, Marusa was sent from Suez to Jeddah and back by King Farouk in 1946, hosting aboard it King Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia to visit Egypt. Upon his arrival to Suez, King Farouk had arranged a military parade that was performed before the Saudi king in celebration of his coronation's anniversary. This visit became a cherished landmark in the history of the Saudi-Egyptian bilateral relations. In 1949, the yacht was sent once more to the port of La Spazia, where the Italian company Ansaldo performed a series of renovations and modifications on Marusa, involving its propulsion and capacity. and concluded with adding fifth floor in January of 1952. A new era in Egyptian history had started to rise at the time, and Marusa had to leave Ras al Team Palace at 6.30 p.m. on July 26, 1952, carrying the last two kings of the Muhammad Ali dynasty to their exile in Italy. King Farouk I and his infant son, King Ahmed Fuad II. Soon, the yacht was visited by the first Egyptian president, Mohammed Naguib, where he retold the historical moment of the king's departure. and later by his successor, Gamal Abdel Nasser, who changed its name from Marusa to al Horeya or Liberty, in 1956. Nasser continued to regard the yacht as the symbol of Egyptian pride, and boarded it on many of his foreign trips, including Algeria, Yugoslavia and Greece, and had also received many leaders and presidents aboard it.
President Sadat realized the historical value of the yacht and chose it to host King Faisal of Saudi Arabia to attend a naval maneuver carried out by the Egyptian Navy in 1974. And on the 5th of June 1975, Sadat insisted that Marusa would be the first vessel to sail through the Suez Canal in its second inauguration, to emphasize the return of Egypt's glory, and that the country that managed to survive numerous wars continues its path to development. In 1976, the yacht sailed covering 12,700 nautical miles, which is its longest journey, to participate in the bicentennial celebration of the independence of the United States of America. In 1979, it accompanied President Sadat on his courageous peace journey to Jerusalem via Haifa. In the year 2000, a presidential decree was issued, giving the yacht its old name back, and once again it was called Marusa. For the past 15 years, the yacht has been anchored at the naval base of Russell Team Palace, observing silently Egyptian history in the making. And today, it sails gracefully over well-charted waters that it's familiar with and under the same sun. Witnessing the inauguration of the new Suez Canal, participating in another victory achieved by Egyptians with their resources and the arms of their youth. <laughs>